I just actually started picked up the camera to get out of this job, so you right together to do it? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, we're not. <laughs> Would you like me to help? That a bit too <laughs> I better do something. On this. G'day guys, welcome to the channel. It's Matt here. Um, now, as I say, every time I start a video, there's a fair bit going on. Um, there's just, there's almost machinery carnage in here, but most of it is under control. There's a couple of things we're still sorting out, but um, we've got header number two here. Um, now that's pretty well um, good to go. I think there's just a couple of little things we've got to wait. We've got to put that grain pan back on after yeah fixing all those shaker shoe um, pivot um, but yeah that's looking good um, now header number one I think just in the last video um, we were wondering what the go was with the transmission um, we had pulled this out obviously rebuilt it put it all back together with and, and installed a diff lock system to it um, but yeah we haven't been able to change gears so uh, yeah we're like wondering whether we need to pull the gearbox out but I think what we found the problem is is the motor that changes the gears which you're not going to be able to see at all really that's at the back of the gearbox there somewhere but it is must have been bumped when it was going in and maybe the shaft is a bit bent and it's just really sluggish to go in um, so yeah, we're not sure whether we've got to pull the gearbox out anyway to replace that or what um, so we're still just sorting that out and um, at the back here we've got some covers going in looks like they beat me to it I just actually started picked up the camera to get out of this job so you right together to do it no. <laughs> <laughs> no, <we're not. laughs> would you like me to help that a bit too honest. <laughs> I better do something on this so this here is the deflector chute for the stuff that goes into the chopper so it's a door you can close if you want to stop anything from going through the chopper um, and we've just put new rubber bits on the side because it was jamming up with um, yeah bits and pieces coming out the side so yeah it's just just basically to adjust how much you want to go through the chopper how you going? Well, that's the... do you need me to sit there? yeah, yeah that ain't, that's all I need push it through a bit more So that was mostly successful. Let's see, that's very noisy. So this deflector plate here that we just put in, um, yeah, basically you can bring that forward and so it's here. So everything that comes around there goes down to the spreaders here. Um, or yeah, everything that flies over here goes down through the chopper. That's pretty well where we're at there, we're just trying to find out a bit of information um, with that, um, the shifting. Also the header front is, yeah, we've still got to do a few bits of the pieces to that. I think we've got the strips of stainless steel to put over there that were for the bits that were worn. Um, and yeah, just fix a couple other bits and pieces. But um, other than that, it's, then it's going to just be a basic check over. And um, yeah, make sure knife guards, knives, all those things are good. And um, then it should be, should be fine to go. If you followed the last video, You'll know this is the header front that Brad was using. Do you think there's a bit of carnage here, Josiah? Just, just, just. A <laughs> but we do have the stainless steel channel there. Do you want to just lift that over this way, Josiah? Please. There we go. So this is the channel that we got folded up. So it's stainless steel. I think it's two mil thick, and um, that is going to go over the top of that because the draper belt's moving over it. Um, when you've got the weight of the crop on there, it's going to be rubbing on that. So. Don't want that too thin or we'll rip the draper belt all up. So, Josiah's here just trying to get that all fitted. Hopefully, 
um, yeah, that'll fix most of our issues there and beefen it up, strengthen it up a bit as well. The poor old tandem trailer's getting a bit of attention. The, uh, the brakes are a bit worn on that. And um, yeah, we just had to weld down some of the checker plate on top there. It had popped up. Um, all the pop rivets had popped out. So um, yeah, we're just going to have to wait tomorrow probably to get the pads and then that can go back all together. Um, we've currently got the um, ripper here that we'd borrowed a while back and we've just got it back here at the main farm to yeah fix it up a bit before we give it back to the owner. Um, he hasn't needed it so it's just been sitting at the development block for a while but um, we generally try to make sure we return anything we borrow in a better condition than when we got it. Um, so we're yeah we bought a new one of the tines that actually bent a little bit so we've got a new tine um, I think that's all bizaloy so that's not cheap but um, yeah we've got a new one there but also we've been trying to bend the old one straight um, or straight enough to even use it as a spare or whatever it may be but yeah it's just got a bit of a twist in it um, I'm not sure whether you'll see it on on camera but yeah you can just see it's got a twist we've straightened it out a, a fair bit it's um it's we've, we've got it 50% of the way um, but yeah we'll just have to keep persevering with that all right well we've got the stainless all on here so that way when the belt comes around over that won't grab on anything and yeah it should should last a long time hopefully as long as we don't get any more rocks hitting underneath there and bending it up but at least that bit's done right oh we'll leave it there for today we've just got to put the joining strip in that tomorrow um, just takes a little bit of fiddling around to get the holes all lined up um, but yeah you should see that tomorrow um, we did have to cut a fair bit out um, that's because in a previous life this header front was in an accident so before we'd bought it and it got converted from 45 foot down to 42 foot um, so that obviously means that on each draper belt section there's a foot and a half less um, so yeah that's that's why we've got to cut this out usually you don't have to you just buy the, the right belt for what you got and it just bolts straight up but yeah should be fine i better put the camera down before i get in trouble again so i should be able to just have it run and ticking over slowly and we might be able to see whether that um shuttering is gone
that's a little um a little disappointing but we go hook up to the header front and that way i can finish my draper belt well just like that i've got it hooked on i was going to film it but i thought my hands were better served um making sure i don't hit anything so doing some tricky maneuvering here to make sure I don't wipe out the comb trailer. Right, so finally I can join this together. So they're the two strips. I just need to find the nuts and bolts and drill a few holes and we should be good. Right, well that is tight. Watch out I don't spear my head with those, but um, now the other guys put uh, this belt back on, so there's no real tension there, which is what we're aiming for, so that's good. So yeah, I think we're fairly well good to go. I did see a knife section that had a chip out of it. Um, yeah, that one there. So we're gonna have to replace that one. Um, but other than that, most of most of it looks pretty good, I think. Well guys, another day. We have found a couple of things. Started pulling the gearbox out ahead of number one um, because we didn't think we could get the little motor actuator off. But um, it turns out you can. It just was very tight because um, it had a bit of just stuff jammed in there. So got that pulled out. Um, we've just been going over it, having a look, and it seems that the only thing we can find that's a bit off is this shaft is just a little bit bent. But um, other than that, it seems to be okay, whether the motor itself is just a bit sluggish and a bit worn out. But um, yeah, we've got a new one anyway, so just swapping a bit, few bits over and we'll pop it in and um and yeah hopefully that will fix all of those issues um, because i did get up underneath there and manually adjusted the the gears and it and it selected them all fine so um yeah i think i think we're in the clear there hello moment of truth did the motor fix the problem slow down to two two to one yep Funny that just whatever happened must just been bumped or tapped and that motor was no good. I might be able to pull this apart and just see if we can see anything obvious with that. The other thing that's going on here, well there's actually a couple of things going on here I'm working on. Um, we've got the um, aircon control from header number two. Um, it was bringing up a code indicating that there was a fault with the potentiometer in here so swap that with 
the one from header number one, and um, and then yeah, the problem followed this unit. So another one of them is about four hundred dollars, but um, yeah, that's just what we need to do. I've pulled it apart. Can't really service it or clean it or do anything. So a new one will just have to have to be. The other thing is we've got the receiver, the GPS receiver that goes on the tower, which some of you might have seen. We'll just go wandering over here and have a look. So the tower up there. Um, so the receiver goes on uh, on the top of that, and that controls. That's the main base station for our GPS. Um, so and also at the development block, we've got one of these, and we have been having some issues with that as well. But this, I'm trying to get this apart and pull this silver plate off so I can wire in a new power plug for it. You can see that one there. I'm just going to pull it out and um, and put a just a Deutsch plug, so a standard two-pin plug on that, and that way we should get away from yeah the corrosion and different things that seems to happen with these. Um, so that's the other thing that's going on as well. So we're up here at the tower. Um, you can see a pretty nice view. Should have done this a couple of weeks ago when all the canola was bright yellow, but there's a little bit down there, right down the back, but. Um, yeah, it's pretty well all finished flowering now. So, what I've have to do here is I've got that, um, yeah, run a new cable down through there, um, put a gland in there just to keep it waterproof, and a little Deutsch plug there. Now, I've just got to pull this one, cut that one off, and put the Deutsch plug onto that, and then, um, yeah, then it should be good to go, hopefully. Hopefully, we won't have any more issues. We're thinking. Possibly what was happening was moisture was getting in there and shorting out. Red light there, so that means it's got power at least. So we'll just wait and see, make sure we've got a flashing green light. Um, so we'll give that a minute or so and make sure that's good to go. Righto, we've got all the lights on that we need and uh, we just checked it on the header and it's all working. So that is good now to get down. Righto, there's been a little bit going on here. Um, this is header number one and the other front. So this is the front that's usually on header number one. Um, but yeah, just it's time to go through it now. Um, there's a little bit... To replace um, the main drive roller um, for this draper belt here um, we're replacing that a bit of the rubber um, coating on the outside was worn off so we we're having a few drums with it just slipping a bit of the time but um, yeah other than that I think there's just got one one belt to one draper belt here to replace and just check over all the other bits and pieces make sure um, there's no cracks or fatigue marks um, that need to be addressed and um, yeah then then it'll be good to go there's just a few things we're waiting on tomorrow for this header that's header number two a couple of bearings a couple of um, parts for the sieves where they're just a bit flogged out and that way we've got a long way to being done just with that shuddering that was still happening with this one in the whole shaker shoe assembly um, we've decided we'll just replace the rear bearing as well and it was a little bit tight and a little bit of movement but we're just going right through it to triple check make sure everything's okay um, just to try and yeah eliminate or reduce that that um, shuddering a bit because it's obviously causing a few fatigue cracks on different things so we just want to want to double check and make sure that's as good as we can get it well guys it's uh, probably gonna be the end of the video and the last few videos you would have seen are sort of a backlog of videos because I'm actually going away for a couple of weeks. Um, so yeah, I'm not actually going to be here to see exactly what we find with this header, but we've potentially found another possible problem. There's a, a pivot um, for the whole shoe area in there. It's, you can't really see it. Um, I need a torch, which I don't have, but um, yeah, that's probably going to be next week's job uh, while I'm away anyway that they'll pull them out and give them a crack see if they can uh, get them to work uh, if they can yeah that might have something to do with it if there's just a little bit of play in that um, all it is is like a rubber rubber bush so um, if it's completely flogged 
you can't actually see it or it's very hard to tell but there is just a bit of a twist in it so that's just yeah enough to cause suspicion um but yeah i think i think we're in pretty good shape regarding the headers um hopefully we can get that sorted but yeah header number one is is um is going good so anyway guys that'll be it for the video uh just remember to hit the like button if you enjoy the videos uh subscribe if you haven't already and we'll catch you in the next one